What's up, Comic Book Nation? BD here, guys. We got a very special guest for After the Dead tonight. Lincoln Castellanos, he was Tobias in season one. You've been missing him. You want answers as to where he is, what he's been up to. Well, guess what? We're going to get all of that, I promise you. Uh, but we got to talk real quick about what happened to tonight's uh, Pablo and Jessica episode of uh, Fear the Walking Dead. There was a little bit of love in finally. Nick and Luciana, what? Don't tell Ophelia. Uh, we got a little bit of more Alejandro's backstory. Madison is becoming a negotiator just like Strand, and she kind of sacked up in a big way. Uh, and Strand had a real emotional finish there with Oscar in the hotel. I thought that was pretty awesome. We'll talk about all that in a minute, uh, in a few minutes, but first we gotta get to this interview. By the way, I do wanna let everybody know though, this is pre-taped. At the time of this broadcasting, guys, I'm on a flight to Australia. So if you're watching, make sure you hit me up on Twitter at Brendan Davis BD. We can talk live, but that means we won't be able to do the live comment section thing today. But that's okay because we have an awesome guest to make up for that. Lincoln, man, what's going on? Thank you for joining us. Hey, what's up, Brandon? How's it going? It's great, man. Such a pleasure to have you, dude. Always a treat to talk to you. Always a treat. I think the last time I saw you was uh, by chance uh, at Comic Con and. Uh, in Hall H, right? That's right, dude. We I should have had that picture ready. We ran into each other right at the Hall H stage, and I was like, dude, we're not going to not take a picture together, right? Yeah, the fear panel had just ended, and they were switching for, for walking, and that's when I passed by you. I was like, oh, dude, it's good to see you again. That's right, that's right. And you were out here in Tennessee for Walker Stalker. And that, yeah, before then, it was it was that time I saw you, yeah. That's right, man, yeah. We crossed paths. We, we're in the same circles. <laughs> So, but what have you been up to, dude? Like, every, I'm following you on Twitter. You're hard to keep up with, man. After with the season one of Fear, it seems like you're all over the place. Definitely. It's been a huge blessing since the show because I've just had an incredible year of uh, all these great experiences, meeting people around the country. I even got to travel, travel to London uh, earlier this year to meet fans from, from, from the U.K., so that was that was great. I mean, yeah, it's been such a fun roller coaster ride because I, you know, as we've talked about it before, and as some people who are, who follow me know, I mean, I was a fan of the comics years before it was a show. So then to, you know, read the comics, want to be a part of the show, then to be on the new show with the new character on on the, the companion series, yeah, it's been a crazy ride. So I'm still a fan through and through. So it's fun to watch this new season of Fear and have people who ask me where are you what are you doing i'm like dude just just focus on what's on right now this is really that's good unreal. Is that's really the good. definition of living the dream that is awesome it is it that is, is so yes. cool so you're a big walking dead fan we're going to talk fear in just a second but i got to get this out of the way who do you think negan killed ah oh, man i don't know i really don't do you know. have information I mean, do you people... have info <laughs> <laughs> I love how that's like th that's usually like sixty percent of the time like one of the first questions I get when I meet fans like dude how's it work to how's it work to run the show dude who who did he kill and I'm like <laughs> dude we're not in the same show it's apples to oranges I mean if I had to take a guess I mean you know for the show to have like a big impact it has to be a character that we've known for a long time you know it couldn't be an Aaron or um, you know someone who who we've just started to get to know I mean so really. You know, a Daryl, a Glenn, Abraham. I mean, my my money's on one of those guys. And I read I read the comic, so you know, if it goes that way, then it won't be a surprise to a lot of people. So I don't know. I'm expecting some twist to happen. Yeah, I'm, uh, they keep hyping it. I think they're going to deliver. I think it's going to be a big premiere. I know you're a big comic fan. Right before we started, we were geeking out. Uh, the Whisperer Award, dude. I mean, there's just so much. We could talk about The Walking Dead all day. But yeah, I want to talk can. Fear the Walking Dead with you, dude. Like, this is your show. When I talk to people, they're like, is Tobias coming back? That's one of the most popular questions I get. So let's just get that in there. Is Tobias coming back? Any reason to believe? Any reason to believe he's coming back? Well, I mean, if you ask me honestly, sure, yeah. I mean, Tobias is a smart kid. Even though he's socially awkward and pretty much an outcast, you know, when you first meet him, you, you kind of, it's kind of easy to write him off. But in the little bit of time that he had on screen, I think audiences had an immediate, positive, empathetic reaction to him. They just wanted to, like, hug him and tell him everything was going to be okay because he was such a nervous wreck. And then to see how far he goes to, you know, put his life on the line to save uh, Madison, you know, Kim Dickens, uh, I think that says a lot about his character because he's a confident person despite his social, you know, shortcomings. So he's out there somewhere. I mean, I've just been telling people that because that's what Dave Erickson, the showrunner, has said. I mean, there's no reason to believe he's not out there. 
So, you know, you can never say never. Well, he, Morgan Jones was out there somewhere for a long time, so I'm just saying, like, the whole comeback thing is not impossible in this world. That's right. The biggest compliment I get is, you know, people tell me Tobias is like the Morgan of fear, and <sighs> that's that, that means a lot to me because I love Lenny James. I love his interpretation of Morgan, and we've had a chance to know each other and become friends, so I like that. I like that connection. That's I so like how cool. people... But if, but if you were going to come back, I mean, do you... And you got to pick between those two versions of Morgan that did come back. Which one are you going to come back as Tobias? Crazy Tobias, who's just like holed <laughs> up in a spiked out uh, little town, or do you want to think everybody's precious and not kill anybody? Which one's Which one are you going to do? Uh, which... Well, I hope I'm lucky like like him and, and get to do a little bit of both. That's oh, the so truth. Cool. But 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 the, the, the fun part would be the crazy because then you have to ground that in a reality that's true to you and it has to make sense to you. And for him it did, you know, when you see him in clear that episode, he doesn't mm -hmm. have his kid anymore, so it's easy for him to just buy into this new reality that's surrounding him. You know, the dude is nuts for obvious reasons. So then for him to come back the way he is now, that's awesome. As an actor, that, that's, that's a gift. Yeah, that's a total evolution. That's so cool. Now, let's talk about these recent episodes of Fear. I'm, I've been telling everybody, these last four have been so kick-ass, dude. I mean, what, I know you're keeping up with the show. I'm hoping you come back one day, but I know you're keeping up in the meantime. Uh, what, what are you thinking so far this second half of the season? I'm loving it. I'm loving these new characters. I'm loving the introduction of this new town that we got introduced to in... In Nick's episode, uh, I think Denai is doing a great job as Luciana. And uh, I just want to say, you know, I have to shout out my friend Lauren Signorino. She wrote the last Sunday's episode, with, with, which started with the wedding in the hotel. And we see how that unfolded and how all the guests became trapped in. I thought that was beautiful. Everything about that was a that great episode. episode. It was so really, job, really, Lauren. really awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm loving it. This, this second half is it's just revving up that engine, and that's what everyone had said from the beginning. You know, season two was going to just pump up the volume as far as everything from season one. Just it, that, and then and then some. You know, they're just really, really showing people that now. This, this, this you know, no one's joking around. You have yeah. to take care of yourself and if you can't do it then you know there are going to be consequences and we're seeing those consequences play out with chris travis alicia i mean everyone everyone's ha you know affected by this now mm -hmm. it's like a little mexican alexandria really if you think about it it is yeah and it's thriving by post-apocalyptic standards yeah yeah it's it's thriving but it's it's still dangerous and we see we see the gangs taking, you know, taking over, you mm -hmm. know, having control of supplies and everything. So there, there's always going to be those people out there who take advantage of, of weak people. So it's rough, man. It's really rough. Who do you rough. think is in the most danger going forward? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I mean. Your girl Madison might be in it's, trouble. It's, uh, she might be in trouble, but we, we're starting to learn more about her. So I don't think they're going to do anything that drastic as far as put her in like, you know, uh, a deadly, you know, scenario. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe close calls. I think everyone's experiencing close calls right now. But who am I worried about? I'm worried about, I'm worried about Lorenzo, man. I'm worried about <laughs> my boy, Chris. Because the dude is just, you know, he's been through a lot since last season. So, uh, I, you know, props to him for doing such a great job. You know, Chris is yeah. going through some, some major, you know, family issues. And the way he's responding to it is not in the best light but but it's great it's great work that said he was just cast in agents of shield i don't know what that means for chris but dude that's awesome he's joining the mcu hey let me ask you this if you could play any superhero who would it be uh, oh man ah uh, well i've always told people i love spider-man and then after Ooh. that i would put the hulk so Ooh, you know hulk, to, to, to be to be in one of those uh worlds one of those uh uh movies or, or adaptations that'd be a dream and i've actually actually i was just in uh palm springs which is in you know close to my hometown of indio california for for comic-con palm springs comic-con stan lee was organizing it and i got a chance to finally meet him and he knew me from the show was buddies with with lorenzo as well so we had a nice exchange of words and support so you know i'm just trying to plant that seed man and so anything is possible i always said a year hey, if anybody could do it though, it's stan the man yeah, he can make it happen. So, I mean, he's made, he's made a lot of dreams come true. Certainly mine. I mean, I got into comics because of Spider-Man, so. 
That's yeah, that's so cool. Now, before I let you go, uh, I just want to let everybody know where can they see you? Do you have any uh, new projects coming up? Do you have any conventions coming up? If people want to meet you or watch you, where can they do that? Yeah, so people can follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I got a fan page. It's all under Lincoln the Actor, just one word. And uh, lately, I did a couple episodes of Showtime's uh, Roadies. It was a Cameron Crowe produced, written show. So I got to be directed by him, got to work with J.J. Uh, Abrams, who was also producer on that. What? That was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. And it's a well, great show. Well, there's your show. Star Wars Episode Eight role you've been waiting on. <laughs> That's another <laughs> one, man, Star Wars. So I got to work on Marvel, Star Wars, and I already got Walking Dead down. Thank goodness. Oh, dude, that's so, awesome. It's just checking off check the whole bucket out. list. People should check that out. I did a movie uh, uh, a while back called I Am Gangster. It's been doing the film award circuit. That'll come out at the end of the year on Video On Demand. It's, uh, I Am Gangster, so people should check out, uh, be on the lookout for that. And I'll keep posting about it later. And I have one more Comic-Con uh, happening in Palm Springs in the middle of November. So when more details come out about that, I'll, I'm going to put out a blast, uh, uh, put some more information on that. Super cool, though. Well, best of luck with all that. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know everyone watching appreciates it. And they've been wondering, dude, where's Tobias? So... Now that you told I, us there's hope, you know, we, I, we might get a little hope. sleep tonight. Yeah, yeah, they can sleep well. And I appreciate everyone who tunes in and watches the show. And right now, to those people who are Tobias fans, I just want to say thank you guys. I mean, it's been, it's been fun. It's thanks to you guys. Yeah, that's so cool, man. Well, thank you so much. You're always welcome on the show. I'm sure we'll have you back on sometime. Indeed, indeed. See thanks, you soon. Brandon. All right, guys, and before we sign off, I did want to address that whole Lorenzo James Henry Shield thing. You know, last week, Lorenzo was on the show with us on After the Dead. I asked him, are you joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe? We have a clip from that. We're going to roll it real quick, and then we'll analyze it. You know, before I let you go, we're comicbook.com, so I got to ask you about this. I'm hearing about this Spider-Man Homecoming uh, role. Dude, what's going on with that? Spider-Man, uh, I can't say anything. But you're in the movie. I, I can't. I can't Who say. I can't. Uh, I can't deny or I can't accept uh, what's going on with that. Dude, I can't. All I can I say is I, it's a great cast. It's so. a great cast. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Because I'm pretty sure Lorenzo James Henry is in it. <laughs> if that's what it says on IMDb, we'll have to find out. So he might not be in Spider-Man Homecoming, but he is on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. playing Gabe, Ghost Rider's paraplegic brother. Uh, younger kid might somehow overlap with Peter Parker. We do know there is a bit of a disconnect between the Marvel TV universe and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So whether or not that's actually going to happen is to be seen. But he's definitely in the MCU, which could definitely spell trouble for Chris on the Fear the Walking Dead because I do know that in a lot of these contracts they're not allowed to be recurring on multiple shows I'm just saying but uh, we can expect a lot more of Chris's story to unfold in uh, episode 13 of this season that's just two weeks from right now uh, but yeah that's all we got for today. Uh, a little love in between Nick and Luciana. If you missed that, we have an article about it on comicbook.com slash The Walking Dead. It finally happened. Don't tell Ophelia because I know Mercedes Mason was rooting for that Ophelia Nick thing to happen. Uh, and we got some really cool Kingdom scoop from Logan Miller, who's playing one of the key soldiers of the Kingdom. He's worked with Carrie Payton's Ezekiel. He's been to the Kingdom. He's been on set all season. He's got the details. And we have them for you on comicbook.com slash The Walking Dead. We will see you next Sunday night, 10 p.m. Eastern time after Fear the Walking Dead. And we will be doing this all Walking Dead season long. Thank you so much for joining. And huge thanks to our special guest, Lincoln Castellanos, who joined us. Uh, we want Tobias back. Let him know. All right, guys, see you soon.